welcome to Street Smart Business TV. Today I want to speak about advertising. Yeah, normally I refer to it as marketing, but I'm going to talk about advertising today. And why am I doing that? Well, because generally there's two camps when it comes to advertising. You've got one camp that believes in image advertising, and you've got another camp that believes in emotional direct response. Now, I've lived in both worlds. For those of you that don't know, I had a very large air conditioning company in New South Wales. Probably used to spend around about seven or eight hundred thousand dollars a year, and a lot of that was on uh, branding marketing rather than direct response. And uh, until I saw the light, I thought I was doing pretty well. It was great for my ego, as I was sponsoring Rose Hill Race Course, you know, all these sorts of things, seeing my name up there. But I've got to ask you the question just seeing my name up there in lights, does that get me more money? Or having that sort of recognition of a few people knowing my, my reputation out there, does that get me more money in my bank account? Well, the truth was no. Okay, Now, I had a pretty big budget, and even my budget wasn't enough to have the amount of leads come in that occurred when I swapped from my brand advertising to my emotional direct response marketing. See, when I swapped to emotional direct response, the leads probably quadrupled for the same amount of money. And that's largely how it dominated the retail industry. And I want the same thing for you. Now, here's the reality. You've got to understand the importance of marketing. See, marketing influences the marketplace. All right, now I know you're aware of this, but I've got to state the blooming obvious for you. Let me give you an example. You see, going back to my era, remember when VCRs first came out? You had the beta and you had the VHS. Now, do you remember which one was better? Well, Beta had a far better picture than the VHS. But in the end, it was the VHS that actually won the war. Why? Because they had better marketing. They had better systems and a better team there getting the message out. And that's what I want for you. I don't want you to be the Beta that might be the very best business on the block. You might be the very best lawyer, the very best doctor, the very best accountant, and yet nobody knows about you because you haven't got effective marketing happening out there. What I want you to do is be willing to get on your soapbox, let the world know how good you are, and remember the story of the beta compared to the VHS, because it's a very painful result if you don't get on your soapbox. Now, the reality is that you must have effective sales and marketing, because if you're there and you've got this closed thought and say, oh, I've got to do everything myself, I've got to do everything myself, you're never going to be able to grow a business. You're going to be trapped in a job. We want to help you escape from there. When you realize that it's about the sales and marketing, and yes, you've got to create a bloody good product to deliver, but when you have the sales and marketing nailed, then you're going to see that money flood into your business, but not until then. See, I had a cap. I was at that million dollar mark myself for a very long time until I became the marketer of my business. So guys, just remember, don't be a beater. Make sure you're a VHS. Get your message out there and use emotional direct response marketing. I know for a fact that the average person, when they get to 65, has 56,000. Let me see, I've written the number down here. Uh, it is $55,873 in assets. That's it. Okay, now. I don't want any of our members, anyone in our environment to be in that situation and that's why I've invited my friend Roy McDonald to the call today uh, so that he can share some words of wisdom with you and you can listen to a professional that uh, has helped literally thousands upon thousands of individuals uh, achieve that financial freedom uh, and hopefully tonight you're going to be wiser and more prepared so that you won't be one of these individuals with $55,873 in your pocket. So, Roy, are you there? I'd like to welcome you to the call. Thank you, Ian, and, and what wise words they are, and uh, what a pleasure and honour it is to be uh, on your call here tonight. That's just... Now, look, you are a master. You, you make money from just about anything you touch. Uh, I'll call you Midas if I'm not too careful in um, the, the reality of, I mean, you, you deal in the markets and you trade, you deal in property, um, you've got an accounting firm, you, you're bricks and mortar. I, I can't remember the turn, your annual turnover in your company. What, what was it, Roy? Do you mind just sharing that with me again? We do about, we've got 69 companies and we turn over about 35 million. It does vary every year, but we're in that period. Um, yes. it's, it's still small, a small business, so it keeps us, it keeps us off the streets and keeps us busy. 
and uh, we love it and we love being a product of the product for our clients to see. Um, yeah. So, so um, 35 million turnover and uh, you've got all the challenges that all business owners have, you've got the staff challenges, you've got delivery challenges, you've got marketing challenges, uh, you walk in our moccasins and so you're not some academic that's uh, sprouting words you read from a book, you like us are street smart and that's why you're on this call. With all of the people in your dealings and in all of your investments and, and ways that you use to, to generate money, what would you say? Do you have a favourite? Do you have a take on where people should be putting their money, what they should be doing? And I know this is a how long it is a piece of string type of question, but I really would love an answer of some sort some, from many individuals that I know maybe have some payouts that they're getting. So many people are, uh, are being laid off from work. If any of you are listening, I do sincerely feel for you. Every time I turn around, there's a major factory closing and. And I've always had the opinion that the best security is you working for yourself in your own business. But Roy, I'd love your take on it. Should someone be a trader? Should someone be in commercial property? Should they buy their own home? I mean, all of these things, please give us just a golden nugget from the master and where you think they should be putting their money. Well, again, what a great question. I, I personally have a favorite in the property. I love property. And uh, I worked out when I was a young boy that by watching others, and as I say, success leads clues, by watching others, that whatever the success was with you owned a restaurant or you owned this or that, you end up putting your money into property. So I thought, well, why not get into property to start with, because that's where you end up. So that was my philosophy of getting the real estate. Mm, okay. So, so Roy, look, um, I got your book quite a while ago. In fact, that's that one of the first things you did uh, when we first met was uh, give me a signed copy of your book, and uh, it's pride of place on my bookshelf. Uh, it is a very interesting read: how to take a dollar, turn it into a million dollars in seven years or less. Now, uh, you kindly said to me that you'd be happy to give this book away to anyone that's serious, and not not just order it because you can, because this is a very expensive gift to, to get and send out and mail out to individuals. But ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are serious in improving your financial situation, those of you that are ready to um, do something that is solid, uh, I would urge you to just start to understand, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, yeah, there you go, don't you love live and sneezing live? But um, uh, I'd urge you to uh, take Roy up on um, his kind offer. Uh, Roy's going to cover the cost of sending it to you, but Roy, I think I speak for both of us. Please do Roy the honour of taking the commitment to read it from cover to cover, because I think it'll be one of the best investments of your time. Gentlemen, it's Q&A time and Michael takes great pleasure in giving me some doozies. So what do you got for me today? All right, today we've got Jessica Hitchings. My husband, two sons and I have a small 16 hectare banana farm near South Johnson and there are more bananas being grown than the consumer buys. So they're being sold at less than production cost. And on top of that, we were hit by Cyclones Larry and Yazi in 2011. Being very small, we have to sell on the market floor, whereas banana growers can sell green loads straight to the chains for a lot more money per carton than we can. I've been listening to you about marketing differently, but I can't find something different that isn't being used now. Well, Jessica, great question, and Michael, you bugger, it is a tricky one, but here's what I would say to you. Firstly, innovation is key. Work out how you can innovate your product and turn it into something else that your competitors aren't doing. Perhaps into, say, banana baby food. Would that work for you? Or, and this is very serious, Jessica, you, you've got to make sure if you're not making a profit each month, you don't go deeper and deeper into debt. So you've got to work out where the line is and then draw a line in the sand so that you don't get yourself into deeper challenges. So see what you can do, try to innovate, and if not, work out where that line is and make sure you don't cross it. Until next time, bye for now.